Welcome to Outbreak Control Options video. Today, we are going to learn how can we use the Outbreak Control Options in AMP for Endpoints. This menu can be found in the AMP console and is used to control outbreaks in your network. For more information, please refer to the AMP for Endpoints user guide. So, let's have a look into these great ways to manage our environment. When we want to quarantine a specific file and instances of the file in any endpoint through retrospective, we can create a simple custom detection. To create it, navigate to Outbreak Control and click Simple. Click Create, give it a name and save it. You can add a single SHA-256 and add a description about the file if desired. This time, we want to inspect various aspects of a file with different signature formats, such as MD5 signatures, logical signatures, etc. Hence, we will create an advanced custom detection. For this, we need to navigate to Outbreak Control, Advanced, click Create Signature Set, give it a name, and save it. Remember to include a signature clicking Edit, Add Signature Link, and save it. Android custom detections will help us to be warned about malicious apps that the user has to install manually. To create it, navigate to Outbreak Control, then click Android and Create. Here you can give a name and save it. Now you can edit it and add any app by uploading its APK file and save it. If you suspect that some files are malicious or unauthorized, may you want to add it to the blocked application list. Go to Outbreak Control and click Blocked Applications. Click Create, give it a name, and click on the Save button. Edit to add either the SHA-256 of the application and description note, the file and description note, or a set of SHA-256. Remember that this only applies to executable files. On the other hand, we want to exempt applications from being convicted, so we must create an allowed application list. This process will be similar to the previous one, but the contrary purpose. Go to Outbreak Control and click Allowed Applications. Click Create, give it a name, and click on Save. Edit to add either the SHA-256 of the application and description note, the file and description note, or a set of SHA-256. Now, let's think that we want to define custom IP address list to detect and potentially terminate network connections. Yes, this is possible. We want to click on IP block and allow list. Here, you will find some required fields that need to be filled. Enter the list in one of the two ways, one by one as a list or as a text file. The list can be defined using individual IP addresses, CIDR blocks, or IP address and port combinations. Use the IP block list to specify the IP to detect any time that a connection is attempted. Use the IP whitelist to specify IP address that you never want to detect. As you could have noticed, you can initiate a scan in the endpoint IOC section. When we click Initiate a Scan, every computer in every group that uses the policy you select will perform the same endpoint IOC scan. There, fill the gaps with the required information. The scale scan username, which is the username on the local computer or domain the scan performs as. The scale scan password, which is the password used for the scale scan username account and the date and time the scan should begin. When the IOC scan is complete on a host, you can go to Events and look for the computer and select View All to see the results. Going below, we can find the installed endpoint IOCs. This section will show you all the indications of compromise installed on your deployment and allows you to manage them. You can set them to active or inactive. View edit, delete them, and also upload custom indications of compromise. You can click the view or the edit button in any of the IOCs. 
and both a short description and a description will be pulled from the XML of the endpoint IOC document. You will be allowed to change this structure assigning categories, endpoint IOC groups, and keywords to each endpoint IOC, so you can filter them. Whether you wish to see an IOC scan result, you have to go to Scan Summary. This page lists all the IOC scans that have been scheduled in your deployment, including scans initiated by policy and scans done by a specific computer. You can also initiate a new policy-based scan from this page by clicking the New Scan button at the top of the page. The Ultimate Actions page will help you to set actions you want to be triggered in a computer when certain event occurs. You can set an automated action to take a forensic snapshot of a computer when a compromise occurs. In order to enable the automated action, please select the severity of compromise. Then, select the group or groups you want the action to apply to and save it. You can choose between active or inactive. You can set either endpoint isolation automated action or submit to thread grid automated action. To check which automated actions were triggered, you can navigate to the Actions Logs tab. This tab also includes a button to stop all isolations. Thank you for watching Outbreak Control Options video. See you next time!